You ever wonder what people think about you? You know, like the naked truth, not that honey coated, sugar sweetened, put a good face on bullshit. They tell you to your face day in and day out. Well, I guess you can say curiosity got the best of me. And I went ahead and found out for myself. And I'm pretty sure by the end, you're gonna be questioning your own reality too. Hi, my name is Stefan. I live in Austin in a 397 square foot shoebox. Thanks inflation. Anyways, for my 30th birthday, I paid someone to interview 15 of my closest friends, family, and coworkers to find out what they really thought about me. Like, swear on a stack of Bibles, Harry Potter, invisible cloak, honesty. My end goal was to receive a concise 360 review that included everything from my strengths to my blind spots to just how much of an a-hole I am. Well, I'm kidding, sort of. But honestly, that probably wasn't far from the truth. I got the initial idea from Dan Harris, a former news journalist who had a very public meltdown on live television in front of over 5 million people. Next tonight, something different. Imagine millions of people watch your life come unglued. An all-out panic attack on TV. This is Good Morning America. People who take cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins for at least five years may also lower their risk for cancer. But it's too early to, to prescribe statins slowly for cancer production. After his on-air freakout, which was likely due to PTSD courtesy of the Iraq war, as well as cocaine and ecstasy, Harris realized that he needed some serious help. He hired a Silicon Valley professional to interview his friends and family. Always reminds me of the Carl Jung quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. The Cliff Notes version? The survey made him realize how much of a jerk he was. He resolved to implement some changes into his daily life. He even went on to write a book, which you might know, called 10% Happier. All of this got me thinking. Can I be 10% happier? Do I have inner demons that I'm oblivious to? I mean, at the ripe yet not unwise age of 30, surely there's something holding me back, right? Well, I wanted to find out, but first I needed to find a way to convince the people in my life to be brutally honest with me. I decided to hire someone to interview my friends and family, a bit of a buffer, if you will. Give them some guaranteed anonymity so they would feel comfortable giving real feedback, not just what they think I wanted to hear. So I did what any smart person would do. I hopped on Upwork and I found an interviewer who is A, neutral, B, a solid writer, C, trustworthy, and D, someone who would not take advantage of my newfound insecurities that were probably formed during early childhood. Here's a sampling of the questions I wanted her to ask. What annoys you about him? How does he make you feel? How do you, ugh. that wasn't one of the questions. How does he feel about you? Describe him in three words. And my personal favorite, what is he exceptionally good at? And just like that, she was off to the races with 15 of my contacts. I mean, how would you be feeling right now? You've got a bona fide stranger calling those nearest and dearest to you, asking them to air your dirty laundry. I called each person individually beforehand and asked if it was okay. And of course they said yes, but deep down it felt a little awkward. Was I using them in some way? Honestly, I felt like these conversations would do more harm than good. Well, here it goes anyway. <clears throat> Coffee, anyone? So here's the report. Snazzy, huh? <laughs> I think so too. It's 14 pages of no BS content about my major assets, flaws, and you know, what people really think. As much as I can sit here and bask in the warm glow of the stuff that people think about me, let me just get the flattering stuff out of the way. The good news is, when asked to describe me in a few words, it was mostly positive. Energetic, interesting, intelligent, curious. The only words that threw me off a bit were manic and sensitive. Manic in particular felt a bit pathologizing. I like to think I'm an even-keeled person, except for that time I punched Dr. Rosenbaum in the nose during a routine tetanus shot. But you know what? He deserved it anyway. Bastard. So with my lightning fast, doctor punching reflexes, it should come as no surprise to you that I was characterized as a doer. I'm someone who's resourceful and creative and who can come up with unique solutions and quickly implement them. I'm pretty proud that's my greatest strength, but I wasn't always like that. 
and it comes back to my youth. I was kind of a wallflower, reserved, almost unwilling. It's kind of badass that we can take our childhood issues and make them into something productive. Sure, they can cause problems for us too, but we shouldn't undersell the good stuff that we've gotten out of the tough lessons we learned as kids. Maybe I'm making up for lost times by being proactive in my adult years. Whatever the case is, I just love getting shit done. And it's nice to know that other people can not only see that about me, but value it too. As much as I wish I could end the video here and be like, see guys, I knew it, I am amazing. That's just not the case for anyone. And don't we all love hearing the bad stuff anyway, especially when it isn't our feelings going through the shredder? So now let's talk about the reason you clicked on this video for the bad. How would you react here? Are you 100% certain of what others feel about you? What if the results weren't what you expected at all? Well, walk with me, at least metaphorically, through my existential crisis. Three main things stuck out to me, and I'm not sure I agree with them all, but anyways, let's dive in. I'm a doer, right? A get shit done, do what I do kind of guy. As a result, I tend to ask a lot of questions. Well, a bunch of people noted that my inquisitiveness was potentially distasteful. Why? Apparently, I don't mind annoying or upsetting others to attain my goals. Even more, perhaps I disregard the feelings of those around me. And it's mostly unconscious? Can I really not tell if I'm pissing someone off? Is everyone lying to me? I try to be pretty honest with people, and I guess I'd hope or thought that others would do the same. But not everyone is comfortable with that. As annoying as it feels for me, we have to respect the boundaries that people set, and that applies to how much they're willing to share. The report says that I speak my mind with no filter, but some relationships require a filter. And while I get that, it makes me wonder what real relationships would require me to put a filter on. I don't know, what do you guys think? Would you stay in a relationship with someone if you had to mask a piece of yourself? I just... Don't know if it's worth it. Not a good idea. Here's another thing that dug at me. I live life with no centralized purpose. This one stung. I've done so many interesting things in my life, experiences that only some could dream of, and for someone to write me off as effectively purposeless... It's not very life-affirming to be told that, but the way I see it, we have this one life to live, and I don't want to force myself to live one rule or theme or motto. I don't think that you should either. Honestly, I get anxious when I'm forced to conform, so I'm not really looking to change that part about myself. I think when you live life outside of the norm, people just regard you differently. I don't work a regular 9 to 5 with the two and a half kids and a house in the suburbs. That confuses some, but hey, that's just not my idea of a good time, and I'm not sure it's even feasible in this day and age anymore. What falls out of the norm for you? Do you think people judge you for it? Is it even worthwhile to care about that? So to the person who said I have no central purpose in life, here's my centralized takeaway. My purpose in life is to have no purpose. Communication keeps coming back up in this for me, and I think that's probably the root of most people's struggles. Different upbringings and circumstances lead to miscommunications as adults, and we're all kind of feeling our way, the blind leading the blind, if you will. Apparently, a lack of trust in others has spawned this intense self-reliance that could be blocking things for me, the report says. This protective behavior can lead to isolation and people sense a lack of openness and trust. Bottom line, as much as I'm willing to be open and honest with people about facts or mundane, everyday stuff, I'm holding back emotionally and they can tell. Okay, fair enough. My default mode when I meet new people is, let me see what's wrong with them. I guess I just find people not worthy of my trust, almost flawed in some major way. But I mean, that's kind of how I feel about myself. If I know I'm flawed, do I feel the same about others? Um, yes. However, I am aware of this and I'm actively working on it. Here's what royally pissed me off. You know you're smart, and though you don't believe you have a sense of superiority, those around you are picking up on something that smells very close to it. What? I have tried so hard to understand others. I've gone to therapy for years, I've done meditation, shadow work, meditative shadow work, volunteered, all kinds of other humble brags. I guess the moral of this finding is that no matter how hard you try to be humble, how people receive you might be different. Impact over intention and all that. There's this element of uncontrollability when it comes to how people view you. It's your choice whether you want to take or leave their opinion. 
So what does this amount to in the end? Do I just move on realizing that people think of me a little differently? What's my 10% happier? And what do I do to reach it? I don't have one, but three takeaways for you. Number one, the reverse golden rule. We're taught in preschool about the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But this couldn't be farther from the truth. In the report, it said, perhaps you treat everyone how you would like to be treated, but it is far better to treat people how they would like to be treated. Think about it. Do you think every person wants to be treated how you treat yourself? <laughs> Absolutely not. And the best way to go about mitigating that? Ask them how they want to be treated. Number two, emotions are necessary for relationships. In a lot of Western cultures, we're taught to control our emotions, to have tolerance, and not freak out in front of other people. But that can lead to an inclination to withdraw from emotional situations, which was prominent in my report. If you can't wear your heart on your sleeve, at least speak your truth. Emotions are necessary for relationships. After reading this, I realize it's okay to express, say, rage towards someone. It's better than holding back how you're feeling and letting that resentment build. Think about it. You can be mad at someone openly? Yeah, you can. And it might be healthier than forcing yourself to stay calm and collected. Number three, fuck what other people think, sorta. Seriously though, fuck what other people think about you. It's good to know how you're showing up for others, but at the end of the day, you gotta show up for yourself, first and foremost. I mean, opinions are like our style of fashion, right? We've all got one, and deep down, we think ours is better than theirs, but at the end of the day, the clothes in our closets are the only ones we have any say over. So yeah, handle your own first. But remember, there's this idea of social cohesion. We're all expected to somewhat comply with the world, or eventually, you'll get iced out. Unfortunately, in today's society, I think you have to be a teensy bit of a kiss-ass that is, unless you don't mind chronic loneliness and depression, but I've been there and feeling consistently outcasted is just not how I want to feel. So, 10% normal, if you will. So yeah, fuck what other people think, but you know, don't be a dick. A famous psychoanalyst once said, no tree can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down into hell. So if I could leave you with one thing, it's this. What would people say about you, given the opportunity? And what would you do with that information? Maybe what we need to do most is hug our demons and accept them for who they are, as weird or as repulsive as they might be. I mean, the truth. It hurts more than it normally does, especially when it was the lies that you wanted to hear.